Hey guys, it's Layla from Ignite and in today's video I'm going to take you through one key theme in William Shakespeare's romantic tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. But before we get into that, please do like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications. And if you're wanting resources to enhance your HSC English studies, check out our website at Ignite HSC. But for now, let's get into today's video. So what you can expect to see in today's clip is a close analysis of one particular idea that is crucial to the play, Romeo and Juliet. This idea I say is crucial because it's fundamental to the way that the love and the romance between Romeo and Juliet cannot be fulfilled. So without further ado, the key theme that I'm considering is that of conflict. I've got a little image here from a great actual representation of the film, Baz Luhrmann's representation of Romeo and Juliet, which features the very young Leonardo DiCaprio. So if you're wanting to look at a contemporary or relatively contemporary rendition, I highly recommend it. But nevertheless, a central theme in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is that of conflict. And the reason I've picked this particular image is because it shows you how Tybalt on the side of Juliet is so enraged by the opposing house to which Romeo belongs. And this really propels the action of the play. Romeo and Juliet cannot be together because of this ongoing history of conflict between their two families. And this renders them star-crossed, helpless lovers. And we know from the outset of the play that unfortunately, their deep love constitutes the tragedy that is the play. Okay, so let's have a look more deeply at how this unfolds. So as I framed, the family feud is the key example of conflict within the play between the Capulets and the Montagues. Juliet is a Capulet and Romeo is part of the Montague family. So let me take a look at some key quotes which evoke these ideas and what I'm hoping students take away from this clip is how to organise evidence in relation to overarching ideas in the text and how to tie in textual quotes that relate specifically to that particular idea. So if you're a student who is writing an essay on Romeo and Juliet and you're crafting your body paragraphs, starting off with the idea of conflict in your opening paragraph is a great way to progress your essay. And the reason I frame starting off specifically is because you want to ensure, right, that you have a nice logical progression through your body paragraphs. Starting off with elements that are conducive to the complications of the play is also well related to having a logical progression. Then you can consider in your second paragraph how this conflict manifests in the play or how it kind of torments the love between the two lovers. And then in your final paragraph, how this results to the cathartic ending of the play, which is of course, unfortunately, the death of the two characters. So let's take a look at some textual evidence that supports this being a key idea. Before we get to the quotes, though, I've got a nice little explanation of why the conflict is relevant to the action of the play. So as the play unfolds, we realise the debilitating impacts of the long-standing family feud and the prologue itself, right, the opening little speech foreshadows that the bitterness and history of this feud and how it will prevent Romeo and Juliet from fulfilling their love, that the history and the extent of it is going to be too much to overcome and that this will ultimately inhibit the relationship between the two young lovers. So the way I've framed my analysis here, I've highlighted my quotes for you and I've put in bold techniques so that students who are watching this who might actually struggle with unpacking textual evidence and identifying the techniques that are inherent to that evidence are getting a really good insight to how you can take out quotes from a text, identify the techniques in there and build some sort of analysis. So, Previous to this opening line, you would have a topic sentence, right, that would introduce the idea of conflict and perhaps relate it to the question that you're answering, and then you would segue into your analysis. So, a quote which acknowledges this is where Juliet states, "'Tis but thy name that is my enemy." So here's Shakespeare's personification, right, the attribution of human qualities to something that is not human, of the name Montague, demonstrates that the name is seen as an evil entity for itself, which creates the external conflict in which Juliet and Romeo are implicated. The force of this external conflict is also seen as Juliet remarks, what's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face belonging to a man. 
So following Juliet's rhetorical question, she accumulates synecdical representations of the body to illustrate how weightless the concept of being Montague seems to her. And then this analysis continued on. This is taken from a student's exemplar essay. Now, let me actually pause there because I think this is a useful opportunity to help enhance your analysis skills. So let's go back to this quote because I think there's actually more that we could flesh out as a teaching tool here. What's Montague? It's nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, and so on. So the fact that she frames the rhetorical question and then she answers it immediately after, another technique you could use there is called hypophora, H-Y-P-O, P-H-O-R-A, when you pose a question and you immediately answer it. Then we see this accumulation over here of different body parts that are synecdical. A synecdoche is when a part of something is isolated and taken from the whole. Now the way that it is particularly listed in the accumulation also utilizes what we call anaphora. Anaphora is spelled A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A and the anaphora is the repetition of the same word at the beginning of consecutive clauses for dramatic effect. So through repeating the nor, 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 it has the effect of Juliet dramatising how in her eyes the fact that Romeo is a Montague should be irrelevant and yet it seems to be given the most important value within the context of the family feud. So a few more notes there on analysis. But nevertheless, you can see how all of these quotes are building cumulatively a student's assertion that conflict is a key theme within the play and you can see how the analysis here breaks apart the way that Shakespeare is using language in order to evoke that central theme. So guys I hope that you found that useful what I'm hoping you've taken away from this clip is a key idea in the text we're starting to flesh out how that idea is foreshadowed in the early parts of the text and how it inhibits the plot development in the sense that because of the conflict we know that Romeo and Juliet will unfortunately never fulfill their love. I'm hoping also that if you're a student who struggles with textual analysis, you've got some tips and some new techniques to add to your repertoire of skills and that you can apply them to future texts you're having to analyse. But for now, guys, that concludes my video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please do place them in the comments below. If you're loving our content, and I really hope that you are, please do like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications so you're notified when new content is coming your way. And if you're a HSC student and you're wanting resources to really enhance your studies in the year ahead, if you need help considering the context, the form, analysis on your key text, and you want exemplar essays, check out our website at Ignite HSC. I guarantee those resources will help you achieve your goals. But for now, guys, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope to see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.